This video demonstrates installation on a pitched roof with asphalt shingles. Read the instructions and safety notes provided in your installation manual and always evaluate the roof for defects or damages before beginning installation. If you have any doubts as to the integrity of a roof, consult a licensed professional roofer. Scaffolding is used in this demonstration to allow unrestricted work. Local safety regulations for roofing work must be observed. The entire system consists of only a few parts which are easy to install. Collectors, roof jacks, profile rails, safety clips, collector clamps, and hydraulic installation parts. First, the products are unpacked and laid out. The following tools are needed for standard assembly. Half inch wrench, five millimeter Allen wrench, level, string, chalk or other marking device, drill, measuring tape, and standard safety gear for roof work. The first step towards professional installation is measuring the roof. Allow 20 inches to the left and right of the collector's base area to accommodate the hydraulic connections. Please refer to the installation manual for all other minimum space requirements. The next step is locating and centering rafters. It's imperative that all roof jack hardware be attached to the center of a rafter or else the structural integrity of the installation is compromised. There are many techniques used to identify rafter locations and it's advised to consult a professional roofer during this process. The rafters for this roof are visible from the bottom and are spaced 16 inches apart. To locate, we're simply measuring from the roof's edge and marking in intervals of 16 inches. Make a vertical mark when identifying the rafter location. Now that we've located our rafters, the next step is determining the anchoring points of our roof jacks. Pre-assemble one of the profile rails to use as a guide. Center the profile rail so that it divides the two central rafters. Adjust the profile rail until it's level, then make horizontal marks precisely where the roof jacks will sit. Please consult the installation manual when determining distances between roof jacks. Since the collectors are installed in portrait orientation, the distance between the top and bottom profile rail should be a minimum of 52 inches and a maximum of 67 inches. Now that the bottom roof jacks are precisely located, the top roof jack locations can be made by simply measuring. Using the bottom roof jack locations as your starting point, measure up and make a horizontal mark. The center point of the roof jack is where the vertical and horizontal markings cross. Distances will of course vary depending on the roof jacks. In this example, we are installing the asphalt shingle roof jack and our vertical distance between the two is 53 inches. With all roof attachment points clearly marked, you can now install the roof jacks. Bosch offers two roof jack options for asphalt shingle roofs. First is the slate asphalt shingle roof jack, and second is the post screw. The post screw is a universal mounting option that can be used for tile, metal, or asphalt shingle. The slate asphalt shingle roof jack is the most flexible of the two mounting options because it allows for simple vertical adjustment of the profile rails. The slate asphalt shingle roof jack consists of four slate asphalt shingle roof jacks, 16 stainless steel screws, one star head bit for stainless steel screws, four stainless steel M8 by 25 flange screws, four stainless steel M8 locking nuts, and four stainless steel M8 washers. The next step is to align the shingle roof jacks with the rafters. Attach the bottom bracket using one of the three inch screws, but do not tighten all the way. Attach the string to the head of the screw and align the roof jacks so they run parallel with the rafter. This will ensure that all of the screws securing the roof jack are centered with the rafter. To weather seal the roof jacks, apply a bead of sealant around the bottom of the roof jack where the screws will attach. Secure each bracket using three screws. For all areas requiring flashed roof attachments, we recommend using a product called Flex Flash ST made by TRA Mage. Flex Flash is a universal flexible corrugated aluminum material that is highly durable and weather resistant. Simply cut the Flex Flash to desired length, remove the backing on the butyl adhesive strips, slide it underneath the upper shingle, and form the flashing so it securely adheres to the roof jack and the roof creating a watertight seal. Now that we've securely attached our roof jacks to the rafters, we can now install the rails. The post screw consists of four M8 stainless steel screws, four holding brackets, four M12 nuts, four washers, four EPDM sealing discs, and four M12 post screws. First, verify the markings are precisely aligned. 
Next, drill a pilot hole using a quarter inch drill bit. It's important to drill the pilot hole precisely at a 90 degree angle to the roof sheathing in order to provide a flat, level surface between the holding bracket and profile rail. Please review the installation manual on how to create a drilling template. Next, assemble the post screw. Adjust the M15 nut, washer, and sealing disc to the desired height of the bracket. Apply sealant to the hole and the screw. Install using a 15 millimeter wrench. Attach the rail to the holding bracket using two stainless steel flange screws. With the roof jack securely attached to the roof rafters, our next step is to attach the remainder of the collector mounting hardware. All Bosch mounting hardware sets consist of components packaged together according to the collector orientation, landscape, or portrait. A basic set is used for the first collector in a row and an extension kit for each additional collector in the same row. So for example, if five collectors are to be installed in a row, then one basic kit and four extension kits are required. A basic on-roof mounting set consists of two profile rails, four end clamps, two safety clips, four stainless steel M8 flange screws. An extension on-roof mounting set consists of two profile rails, two mid clamps, two safety clips, four stainless steel M8 flange screws, two splice bars. For areas requiring mounting options for high wind and snow loads, please refer to the installation manual. First, join the profile rails together using a splice bar. To lock, tighten both M10 set screws using a five millimeter Allen wrench. Now, attach the safety clips to the innermost slotted holes of the lower profile. Simply push the clip into the rail until it clicks into position. Finally, push the end clamps into the right hand side of the profile rails until they click into place. Next, attach the profile rails to the roof jacks using a 5mm Allen wrench and a 13mm wrench, but don't tighten them until both profile rails are aligned. Make sure that the rails are parallel and that all angles are right angles. With a piece of string, measure the diagonals to verify that both profile rails are properly aligned. With everything aligned, the rails can now be fastened tight. Please note, even though the rails may be level, the shingles might not be. This may result in the collectors looking crooked and a very unhappy customer. It's recommended to step down from the roof and look at the rails from the customer's perspective. If you see a noticeable difference, simply adjust the rails so that the collectors will look flush with the rest of the roof. And that's it. With the rails installed, we're now ready to prepare the collectors for installation. Now we're ready to mount the FKC collectors. They're easy to handle. You can simply put them down on their edges. That's what they were designed for. You'll find all the collector hydraulic component parts inside two of the four protective corners. When preparing the collector for assembly, the sensor well for the collector sensor must be on top. Now you can determine the connection positions. In this example, we'll demonstrate installing the cold in connections in the lower left hand corner and the hot out connections in the upper right hand corner. Use a plug to close off the connection at the collector's upper left hand corner. Slip on the plug, adjust the spring clip so that it sits inside the collector hose barb, and then pull the locking ring to secure the connection. Repeat for the second collector in the bottom right hand corner. To make installation of the hose connections easier, we recommend that you place the hoses in hot water before installation. Now install the collector connectors. Slip on the hose over the collector outlet, Slide the spring clip so that it sits inside the collector hose barb and then snap into position. Repeat for the bottom connection. Carry the collector up onto the roof. Place it on the profile rail and allow it to slide gently into the safety clips. The collector can only bear load once it's secured with all collector clamps. Carefully slide the collector into the end clamp and screw it on tight. If done correctly, the plastic screw guide will break away. Place the mid clamp into the profile rail and slide it across until it touches the collector, but do not tighten yet. Repeat for the second profile rail. Now carry the left collector up under the roof. Place it on the profile rail and allow it to slide into the safety clips. Slide the spring clips onto the top and bottom hoses before connecting the collectors. Push the collector towards the first collector so that both hoses slip over the collector connections. Slide the spring clip over the hose barb on the collector connection and then snap into place pulling the green locking ring. Now tighten both mid clamps. Finally, the end clamps are installed on the left edge. Slide them down the profile rail until they snap into the first slotted hole. The end clamp is pushed onto the collector and then screwed down. Next, 
Install the collector sensor into the sensor well located at the top. Slide the sensor cable through the strain relief, puncture the sensor well membrane with a screwdriver, and then slide the sensor in for about 10 inches until it bottoms out. Screw in the cable strain relief and then tighten down the cap. The collectors are now firmly installed and the assembly is complete. All that's left now is making the hydraulic connections to the collector. Multiple hydraulic connection options exist. For more information, please view the section on hydraulic collector connections. The FKC collector has four different types of hydraulic connection options. On-roof connection set, flat roof connection set, series connection set, and air vent set. The on-roof collector hydraulic connection set is designed for a fast and secure connection. In this example, we're installing the on-roof connection set without an air vent because the filling station will be used to commission the system. If another method is used to commission the system, an air vent must be installed. The on-roof collector hydraulic connection set consists of two 40-inch solar hoses, two plugs, two hose barb connections with 18mm clamping ring, one 5mm Allen wrench, two half-inch adapter rings, one sensor cable strain relief and sensor plug, three hose clamps, and one installation manual. As shown in the collector preparation video, the two plugs were installed in the upper left and lower right-hand corners of the collector. Now let's make our connections using the 40-inch hose. First, mark the location of where the hose will penetrate the roof. With a hole saw, cut a one and a quarter inch hole in the roof. Apply a bead of sealant to an OD pipe flashing, slide underneath the shingle, and center over the hole. Attach the flashing using roofing nails, and then seal. Note, since the flashings are silver in color, paint the flashings using a high quality roof flashing paint. Next, fish the sensor wire down through the roof penetration and then follow with the hose. Slip on one hose clamp over the hose and then make your attachment to the collector. To finish the connection, we recommend sliding insulation over the hose and then covering with Flex Flash ST made by TRA Mage. Simply cut the Flex Flash to desired length, remove the backing on the butyl adhesive strips, wrap it around the insulation, and form the Flex Flash so it securely adheres to the insulation and the pipe flashing. To finish the hose connection in the attic, simply slide a hose clamp over the hose, install the hose barb connectors, fix the hose clamp, and finally, replace the 18 mm ring with the half inch adapter ring. Now you're ready to make your solar circuit connection. Repeat the same procedure for the lower left hand corner. The flat roof collector connection set is designed to connect the collector directly to half inch copper pipe. It can be used for both flat roofs and pitch roofs. In this example, we're installing it on a pitched roof without the air vent because a high pressure filling station will be used to commission the system. If another method is used to commission the system, an air vent must be installed. The flat roof collector hydraulic connection set consists of one five millimeter Allen wrench, one sensor well plug, one sensor cable strain relief, one spare hose clamp, two pipe fixing brackets, two plugs, two union nuts, two split rings, two compression elbows with 18 millimeter clamping rings, two half inch adapter rings, and one installation manual. As shown in the collector preparation video, the two plugs were installed in the upper left and lower right hand corners of the collectors. Now let's make our connections using the 90 degree compression elbows. First, replace the 18 millimeter fail ring inside the compression elbow with a half inch adapter ring. Slide the union nut onto the collector outlet. Place the split ring behind the hose barb on the collector connection and press together. Thread the nut onto the compression elbow. Mark the location of where the hose will penetrate the roof. With a hole saw, cut a one and a half inch hole into the roof. The one and a half inch hole will allow flexibility during thermal expansion and contraction. Next, apply a bead of sealant to the OD pipe flashing. Slide underneath the shingle and center over the hole. Attach the flashing using roof nails and then seal. Note, since the flashings are silver in color, it's recommended to paint the flashings with a high quality roof flashing paint. Slide a piece of half inch copper up through the flashing from inside the attic. Connect to the compression elbow. Note, please do not solder the half inch adapter ring to the copper pipe. Now slide the end of your sensor wire through the flashing and into the attic. Cover the pipe and elbow with a high temperature insulation. To finish the connection, we recommend covering the insulation with Flex Flash ST made by TRA Mage. 
Simply cut the flex flash to desired length, remove the backing on the butyl adhesive strips, wrap it around the insulation and form the flex flash so it securely adheres to the insulation and the pipe flashing creating a watertight and long term seal. Repeat the same procedure for the lower left hand corner. The series connection set is an accessory that allows the installer to connect another row of collectors. In this example, we're going to connect two rows of collectors together. The series connection set consists of two hose elbows, two union nuts, two split rings, one 40 inch solar hose, two plugs, and two hose clamps. First, the collector plugs must be installed at the following locations. Now, let's make our connections using the 90 degree hose elbows. Attach both hose elbows to the collectors first by sliding the union nut onto the collector outlet and then install the split ring behind the hose barb on the collector outlet. Align the elbows and measure the distance between the two connections. Mark and cut the solar hose according to this distance. Remove the elbows from the collector in order to prevent the collector connections from damage during installation. Next, install the first elbow on the piece of cut hose. In order to make the installation easier, it's recommended to heat up the solar hose with warm water. Slide on two hose clamps and then attach the second elbow. Attach both elbows to the unions and then secure the hose clamps. Finally, securely tighten the union to the elbow. Since the solar hose already has insulating properties, the use of high temperature insulation is optional. For more details on how to insulate the solar hose, please view the video detailing the on-roof connection set. In order for closed loop solar thermal systems to function properly, all of the air must be removed from the solar loop. Since the majority of residential solar domestic hot water systems consist of a single row of collectors, the air can simply be removed with a high pressure filling station. If you prefer to commission a system using your own filling pump, or if multiple air traps exist, an air vent set is required. The air vent set consists of one weather protection cap, one automatic air vent, one ball valve, one fiber washer for ball valve, one air separator, two hose clamps, one hose connector, and one four inch solar hose. The components in the half inch copper pipe set are one double nipple with nut, one split ring, one fender washer, one fiber washer. Components for the on-roof connection set are one hose bar with O-rings. Also, the air vent set has two connection options. First is a direct connection to half inch copper pipe. Second is direct connection to the on-roof connection set. If used with the on-roof connection set, the contractor has the option of installing the air vent inside the attic as long as it's at the highest point of the system and no other traps exist between the collector field and the air vent. In this example, we're going to be using the on-roof connection set and installing the air vent outside on the roof. The air vent is always installed at the highest point of the system where the fluid returns to the solar tank. This is also known as the supply connection. First, Push the 4 inch piece of solar hose onto the collector connection and fix into place using a solar hose clamp. Next, slide on the second hose clamp in preparation for the air vent. Assemble the air vent by first installing the ball valve with the fiber gasket. Then thread both solar hose barbs into the vent block. Attach the assembled air vent to the 4 inch hose and secure into place using the pre-installed hose clamp. With the air vent installed, you can now attach the on-roof connection set, but make sure the air vent remains perfectly vertical to ensure proper operation of the internal float. 